Good evening. I'd like to call the village board meeting for the village of Cary for April 16th, 2024 to order with roll call, please. Collier? Here. Dudek? Here. Weinhammer? Here. McAlpine? Here. Walrath? Here. Stefani? Here. Thank you. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Hey, Brian, could you check the? Thank you. Now moving to the open forum where the public is invited to make an issue-oriented comment on any matter of public concern not otherwise on the agenda. Checking on that. Nothing? Is there anybody here that would like to address the uh, village board before we get started? Thank you. Go ahead and close open forum at 6.01. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention on the mayor's report, uh, uh, we had the uh, actually uh, Administrator uh, Morimoto and our economic development specialists, as well as myself, were able to participate in the chamber's 60th anniversary uh, dinner on on Friday night. It was an awesome event. It was at Bull Valley in uh, Lake in the Hills. They did a really nice job. We were recognized for our ongoing support, uh, as usual. Uh, it was a very nice uh, event, and it was fun to kind of spend some time with the businesses on a social setting. So I uh, wanted to give a shout out to the chamber and thank them for that. Uh, moving forward, uh, the consent agenda. I will entertain a motion to approve consent to agenda items A through E as shown on the village's website and as displayed on the video monitor during the village board meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Dudek? Yes. McAlpine? Yes. Stefani? Yes. Collier? Yes. Weinhammer? Yes. Laura? <coughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Moving on to items for separate action. Uh, we're going to go into a discussion uh, with regarding uh, the, the zoning uh, issues that we have over at the Maplewood property regarding uh, the proposed uh, transportation center uh, in a uh, R2 uh, residential zone. So I'm going to turn it over to. Do you want to talk about <clears throat> record for the for our yeah, meeting tonight. Yeah, for the for the record, we received two letters uh, that we're, we're kind of in. To be perfectly honest, we're we're kind of in flux on how we're going to deal with letters moving forward. We had our last meeting, and in, in many many years, we don't read letters that are brought by the you know mailed in or emailed in. We reference them, but they they have asked to have these read into the the record. So. I've asked our attorney to paraphrase and kind of call out some of the highlights of some of these meetings. They're, they're quite lengthy. Uh, we will be entering uh, at our next community the whole meeting. We will be having a discussion on how to handle these things moving forward uh, with our public po our policy. We have a very open policy here. We let people come up and discuss things all the time, but uh, this is we don't want this to become a problem moving forward. So uh, what we'd like to have is, you know, we don't we want to get away from anonymous letters. We want something that is verifiable, name, address, a phone number that we can verify that these uh, issues or the comments are in fact true. So uh, I've asked our attorney Euler if he could paraphrase some of these letters, please. Uh, so we did, the board did receive two letters. All the members of this board have copies of those letters to review. Uh, as the mayor indicated, <clears throat> we did read a letter into the record at our last meeting. I think we were trying to figure out exactly how to handle that kind of a practice and the board will be uh, formalizing that practice in the near future. Public comment remains available to anyone here uh, who wants to address the business of the board this evening, particularly the petition um, that we're going to be discussing this evening. And as to these two letters, uh, I can indicate that both of them come from uh, individuals who are objecting to the granting of this particular zoning petition and relief. Uh, one of them is concerned about the fact that it will expand a use that that individual is already concerned about and is unhappy with uh, the transportation facility and believes this, this would represent an impermissible enlargement of that use. And the other uh, is objecting, contending that the zoning ordinance um, that we now have in place in the village should be enforced as is. 
and that the zoning for this property they believe is not appropriate for this particular use and that this, the expansion of this use, the transportation facility, school transportation facility, should look to a different area in the village uh, and a diff different zoning district where it would be more appropriate. So these uh, letters will be made part of our record this evening. Uh, as I indicated, the trustees have had a chance to read the letters in their entirety. Thank you. Uh, now turning it over to um, Director Simmons. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the Village Board this evening, uh, the proposal uh, before for discussion is a petition by School District 26 for uh, a text amendment, uh, conditional use and variances related to the Maplewood property uh, and the reestablishment of a uh, bus transportation center uh, on that subject property. Uh, an overview of the property. Um, the property is currently zoned R2 single family residential district. Um, as mentioned, the petition is seeking the text amendment uh, and conditional use and variances uh, related to the development of the site. Uh, brief history in the property, it was part of the original corporate limits of the village um, in 1893. Uh, the gymnasium, uh, which is on the property, was the forced portion of the building to be constructed um, in the late 1920s. Uh, while the uh, uh, school district was operating in the old schoolhouse on Main Street, um, about a block away from the location. Uh, in 1945, uh, classrooms were added to the property, which um, then made the Maplewood School uh, and the school operations moved to uh, this location. Uh, in 1975, the school district uh, constructed the bus storage lot on the property. Uh, and then since that time period, uh, both the school and uh, storage lot have had various improvements uh, performed to them that increase uh, both of their footprints on the site. Uh, under the current proposal, the school district are, is seeking to demolish the existing uh, school building uh, and transportation center as well. Uh, and they're looking to reconstruct or establish uh, a new uh, transportation center on the property. Uh, it would include a reconfiguration of the bus storage area uh, the elimination of one existing uh, baseball field on the property and then also uh, per the plans would preserve a uh, future right of way for uh, the potential Maplewood access roadway um, which is currently in its phase one analysis. Um, as detailed in the zoning board um, staff report, uh, the school similar to uh, the village uh, has various um, uh, acts that is required to follow. Uh, basically, the Illinois school code uh, dictates what uh, schools are re required to do within the state of Illinois. Um, and one of those uh, provisions is to provide uh, transportation for its students that live uh, a certain distance away from uh, schools or uh, do not have a safe uh, route to walk to schools. Um, in addition to um, those provisions uh, within the school code, the uh, schools are also required to comply with local zoning ordinances uh, for their operations. So. Uh, uh, facilities that are constructed uh, would need to comply with zoning uh, regulations. Uh, so the petitioner uh, request this evening is seeking uh, zoning entitlements uh, related to uh, the reestablishment of their transportation center as the primary use of this property uh, with the de demolition of the school uh, building, uh, the existing bus uh, storage lot um, was considered as an accessory use to the school. Uh, so it was allowed under our zoning regulations with the school as the primary use of the site. Um, as that uh, building would be demolished and removed, uh, the bus lot becomes the primary use of the, lot, the, the property, uh, which our current zoning regulations do not allow uh, within uh, single family districts. Uh, this slide shows the uh, both existing and proposed conditions for the site. Uh, as you can see on the left side is the existing condition uh, with the school building and uh, bus storage facility and uh, existing ball, ball fields. Uh, the right would show the Im proposed improvements with a uh, bus storage lot uh, for uh, roughly 40 vehicles, uh, a new uh, maintenance building, and then parking for employees um, as well. Uh, the building as proposed would be precast construction uh, with uh, two vehicle service bays and wash bays. Uh, it also would include offices um, and training areas for staff. Uh, that uh, can then uh, be uh, trained at the facility. So uh, from an operation standpoint, we provide additional resources for the school district uh, to uh, provide for their employees at this location. Uh, per the R2 district bulk regulations, the proposed plan will comply with the 
uh, bulk requirements for the R2 district, uh, specifically building setbacks, lot coverage, uh, density, and also parking requirements. Uh, the proposed uh, facility will also comply with the building height requirements. Uh, the plans that were submitted did not identify the height for the structure, uh, but the petitioner did mention or provide information to the zoning hearing that it would not exceed that 30 feet, uh, so they will comply with that requirement as well. Uh, one, a couple of changes that were from the original <coughs> submittal uh, to highlight uh, that re, uh, the, the initial petition had a couple of additional variances that the petitioner was able to revise their plans uh, to comply with code. Uh, specifically, they re, re, um, modified their plans at the entrance at uh, Prairie Street uh, so that the site uh, met the parking setback uh, in the uh, northeast or southeast corner of the site. Uh, and also they relocated the fence, which is along the eastern property line uh, to meet the eight foot re required setback in that location. <coughs> so, so, so two variances that were part of the original plans were not required um, as part of this process. Uh, in the southeastern corner of the pro portion of the property, uh, it does back up directly to uh, existing single family residences. Uh, and as such, a uh, storage lot would require to have um, a type C transition area be provided in that location, uh, which essentially is a 15 foot uh, landscape buffer uh, with shade and screening trees, uh, plus shrubs be provided in that area. Uh, there are some existing trees that are in that location uh, that the petitioner is proposing to uh, preserve, uh, but they are adding additional landscaping along the parking lot as well that would provide uh, screening in that area, uh, which would comply with code. Um, for uh, the adjacent residents who uses. Uh, as with any uh, proposed development, when a uh, project is proposed, uh, we review guidance within the village's comprehensive plan as far as uh, future land use decisions. Uh, specifically, this property, as the board is aware, uh, the property is designated for multifamily within the comprehensive plan. Uh, and the plan looks at uh, future redevelopment of the property uh, with its proximity to the downtown area for uh, potential development for apartments, uh, condominiums, or senior housing. Um, and the plan recommends that the site should feature a range of residential uses and that site planning and design should be sensitive to the needs of the surrounding uh, <coughs> residential areas. Um, goes without saying the proposal does not currently uh, propose housing, uh, but as the uh, school district currently owns the property, they're looking to improve a property that they currently are have ownership of um, and are looking to enhance uh, their services uh, potentially to uh, the residents of the village. Uh, likewise, with the downtown plan, uh, the site um, is identified as a potential unique opportunity for uh, development to enhance the downtown area uh, and um, additional houses uh, within the downtown area that can support uh, businesses downtown. Um, other guidance that's within both plans um, that would be applicable to the current proposal, um, are kind of highlighted in the, the end of the slide here, um, is basically uh, the petitioner is proposing to reserve land, uh, of, uh, appropriate land for a future access roadway on the north end of the property. Uh, a um, right of way is proposed along with uh, land that is owned by uh, Metra for potential Maplewood access roadway that is uh, again currently in the phase one analysis. Um, and also the petitioners uh, work to site the proposed um, reconstruction of the transportation center uh, further north, uh, north on the property uh, so that it'll be further away from adjacent single family residences. Uh, the proposal for the uh, proposed changes <coughs> to the Unified Development Ordinance are, is highlighted in the slide. Uh, the petitioner is seeking to amend the uh, table of permitted uses within the UDO uh, that would allow school related transportation centers uh, and storage lots as a conditional use within the R2 district. Uh, as uh, the table is shown there is the educational uses portion of the land use table uh, where certain uses are allowed within uh, various zoning districts. Uh, the proposed text amendment would add a new section to that table uh, related specifically to uh, transportation centers and storage lots and allow them as conditional uses uh, within uh, the R2 district only. Uh, this slide shows the location <coughs> of uh, both the subject property on the right slide, right hand side of the slide um, shows the Maplewood property uh, in the uh, call out and then the uh, map on the left shows all the properties within the village uh, which are currently zoned uh, R2. 
uh, existing uh, properties or school properties uh, that um, within the village would include the Maplewood property, uh, the Briargate, uh, Ro Briargate School, uh, the former junior high, uh, the um, uh, Prairie uh, property, and then the Carrier Grove High School are all zoned R2. Uh, other schools within the village have different zoning classifications, either <coughs> R2A, uh, R1, or the E1 district. Uh, as with any uh, proposed amendment uh, to the code, there are various standards that are, are established within the UDO uh, for consideration, uh, which are summarized in the slide. Uh, essentially, the proposed amendment is not detrimental to the order development of the village. Uh, it shall not be detrimental to or endanger the health, public S safety, morals, and general welfare of the community, and the proposed amendment promotes the public interest, and not solely the interest of the applicant. Uh, in addition to the text amendment, uh, the zoning board did discuss uh, and deliberate regarding the proposed con conditional use and variances. Uh, this uh, should the text amendment be supported, uh, the uh, conditional use um, would require. Uh, compliance with the village's UDO requirements for loading docks, service yards, and exterior work or storage areas, uh, which essentially requires certain uh, landscape screening or s uh, screening elements ar around those uses. <coughs> uh, within the code, there, again, there are con uh, standards for conditional uses that would be required uh, should um, a, a use be proposed, which again are summarized in the slide. Uh, but again, would not impede uh, normal orderly development of the surrounding property uh, or overburdening municipal services and be consistent with policies and future land use maps in the village's comprehensive plan uh, to highlight a few. Uh, in addition to the conditional use, uh, the petitioner is seeking approval of two variances. Uh, <coughs> one is regarding the proposed fence height for the storage lot. Uh, the maximum fence height, uh, which is permitted in the code, is uh, eight feet. Uh, and they're proposing to install a 10-foot high uh, non-opaque uh, chain link fence around the uh, outdoor uh, bus storage area. Uh, and uh, per information provided by the petitioner, the proposed 10-foot uh, fence is lower than uh, portions of the existing fence around that uh, uh, existing storage area. Uh, in addition to the fence variance, uh, the petitioner is also seeking approval of a variance to the landscape screening. Uh, which requires uh, shade trees and screening trees um, of uh, surrounding a outdoor storage lot. Uh, the petitioner did provide landscaping uh, along the parking lot uh, to screen per code and also along the building foundation uh, and then within the buffer yard as previously mentioned adjacent to the single family residential area. Uh, through discussions with the, the petitioner they have uh, provided a revised plan um, that has provided some additional landscaping on the south and west side of the uh, bus storage lot, which would uh, comply with the village's type B uh, transition area yard requirements. Uh, so it would be a mixture of both shade trees and um, screening trees on the, those two portions of the property to screen from visibility from the adjacent uh, single family residences. Uh, the Revisions to the landscape plan would still require approval of a variance um, as it's screening uh, two sides of the, the storage lot. Uh, but one of the conditions of uh, recommended for approval, uh, if uh, the variances were supported, would be to provide screening on just the, the south and west side. Um, <coughs> again, for variances, there are standards which are uh, within the UDO for support of a variance, uh, specifically. Uh, the property cannot yield the realism of return if permitted to be used only under the standards set out in the title. Uh, the hardship uh, which is uh, caused by unique circumstances related to the land and not the general conditions of the district uh, and the re relief proposed uh, will not alter the character of the locality. Uh, in the subject case uh, was deliberated before the zoning board um, in a public hearing back in March. Uh, and based on the discussion during that meeting and the um, uh, vote from the zoning board, uh, the zoning board recommended by a vote of two to five denial of the recommended uh, requested uh, text amendment uh, <coughs> due to uh, the board not supporting uh, the text amendment. They did not make a recommendation or a vote on the proposed conditional use 
um, or variances uh, based on the belief or the understanding that uh, if the code is not allowing the use, uh, that, that it was not a matter that they could also vote on uh, with the code not allowing it uh, specifically. Uh, so for this evening, there are th uh, three actions that we have presented uh, for the village board this evening for consideration, uh, which are uh, summarized in the slide. Uh, the first uh, would be if um, the village board uh, through deliberations this evening believes that the petitioner has met the applicable text amendment standards uh, in this case and uh, the village board should move to approve an ordinance uh, approving the requested uh, text amendment. Uh, in that case the board could then refer uh, the consideration <coughs> of the conditional use and the variances back to uh, the zoning board so the board wants a recommendation from the board on those two matters uh, before voting on uh, either of those items. Uh, the second option uh, as presented would be, again, uh, provided that uh, 30 days has passed since the public hearing was held on the matter. Uh, within the Unified Development Ordinance, there is language that allows, uh, should the zoning board not make a recommendation on a matter uh, within 30 days of a public hearing, uh, the village board may act on that petition. Uh, so if, if the village board uh, wants to vote on the entire petition, uh, you may do so. Uh, and um, should the board determine that the uh, tax amendment, uh, conditional use, and variance standards are all met in this case, you may recommend approval of the second ordinance as proposed, which will uh, approve the uh, project in its entirety as proposed. Uh, the third uh, option which uh, for discussion uh, would be uh, if the village board concurs with the ZPA's recommendation and believes the petitioner has failed to meet the standards, uh, the village board can move to approve an ordinance that denies uh, the requested tax amendment, uh, which is uh, including your packet as A3. Uh, and should um, the board uh, seek recommendation or changes to uh, any of those ordinances, uh, staff would recommend that uh, based on discussion, if there's an item that uh, requires additional review or modification that a vote may be taken tonight on one of these matters and then the final uh, decision on the ordinance uh, potentially at the next board meeting for uh, the final draft. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions the board may have and the petitioner is here to provide additional information as well regarding their petition. Army? Oh, certainly. <coughs> is anybody here from uh, District 26 would like to uh, address the board? Wherever you're more comfortable. Just state your name and affiliation for the record, please. Sure. Dr. Brandon White, Superintendent of Schools for Cary District 26. Dave Shepard, I'm the business manager for Cary School District 26. Good evening. Good evening. So just um, we don't have an additional presentation other than outside the um, original application. Um, I just wanted to note that based on um, what was presented by Mr. Simmons this evening, that um, we have complied with all of the um, requests, even in regards to some of the adjustments in the variances, as well as um, we believe um, our application also meets um, the amendment standards. I also want to say good evening, trustees. Good evening, Mayor. I apologize. I didn't begin with that. So thank you. Mr. Shepard, do you have anything to add? I do that. Okay. Does the board have any questions for the staff? I was open it up to, is there anybody here that would like to address the village board regarding this? <coughs> None? Okay. I'll open it up for uh, questions from the village board. Anybody want to start? Um, I already spoke with Eric Morimoto, so my questions were answered um, over the past several weeks and today as well, so I don't have any additional questions. Thank you. I don't necessarily have any questions per se. Um, I was just really looking to see if we had any input from anyone. We have quite a few residents that have come out. I thought perhaps they'd want to um, share with us what their thoughts were on it. We have read into very minimally a couple of comments from uh, those letters that came in just in not the entire letters um, I know that we've received also some additional emails in our um, emails all of the emails that we've received at least that I've received have been um, not in support of this so I was just trying to see if we had any more feedback from other people um, at this point at this juncture 
and I'd love for you to come up and give us some feedback. Good evening, Christy Wagner, 539 Crens Avenue. Um, what I'm sensing is that it's, it appears that our village board seems to be very anxious to find ways to bring new businesses and more opportunities for alcohol to be involved in our downtown area. I'm not sure that's where our priorities really need to be. I think we need to get the Maplewood issue resolved. And the demolition of the building cannot continue until this transportation center issue has been resolved. And for those of us who live on the street, we are begging that we get this done. This has been with us for over 10 years, 13 years. And now the fence is around the building, but nothing else can happen until this transportation center issue is resolved. It's not rocket science. This transportation center has been there. It is not a problem as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not alone in that. I'm sorry that I haven't emailed or sent a letter, but I'm here tonight to tell you that this has to get resolved. We don't want to continue to have that building be not only an eyesore, but it's dangerous. Um, it needs to be decided, and it needs to happen soon. I understand the comprehensive plan and what the village is all about with downtown development. And that's a good thing. I'm not against that. But let's take care of our neighborhoods as well. And that's what I want to see happen. It, it's what has to happen for, for the neighborhood and the community to go forward. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Does anybody else would like to offer their comments? Oh, Martha Ritter, 239 North School Street. I just would like to say, have, that, have you, any of you guys walked the neighborhood and asked any of the residents what they wanted? I, I haven't seen, wait, I haven't seen any of you people in my neighborhood. Martha, the you've seen me wanted, many times in your neighborhood. You've seen me I've, many times I've in your neighborhood. never, once. No. When you were visiting two houses down, once. I've never seen any of you. Once. Would you like to continue with your anyway, comments, please? Thank you. Have you asked them? A lot I've, of been people in the want the baseball. I've talked to a lot of people in the neighborhood. I've gotten, it's, it's a mixed bag over there. A lot of people want the baseball back. They like the kids there. Where else are they going to play? You might as well just throw them into Fox River Grove because that's where <coughs> Algonquin, where they told me, Scott told me, the guy who runs baseball, he says, oh, yeah, well, we have to find different baseball fields again because the park district does not have enough. And uh, I just want to say, who wants all those houses back there? Nobody. Not in our development anyway. We have other things that we'd like. We've, the barn has been there for 40 years since I've been there. I, it's no problem, no noise, no nothing. We have no problems with it. We like it like that. We don't want cars coming down there, 100 cars during the day and night. At least the barn, the buses only go morning, night, and they're off all summer. We have no problem with that. Ask any neighbor. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, open it up to any other conversations that people want to have, thoughts? President I'll Howard. add uh, one brief thought, and it really starts with the, the fact that, that ordinances and rules and laws and things that we have to really are detail-oriented. And this is a big issue for our village, but there is only one question in front of us right now, and it's do we approve this usage without the adjunct school. That's it, everything else is consequences of that decision and potential this and possible that. We have to answer that question first. Then after we have a yes or no on that question, we can move a path forward. I would agree 100% with everybody who has voiced the same thing, which is we all have to find a way to work together because it's not going anywhere. The property is still there, and it needs to have something done to it, whether it's an outside developer, whether it's the school districts, whether it's anybody. It does need to have something done because the, the, the school itself is an eyesore. The school itself can be dangerous. 
but we have to start by answering this single question in front of us tonight first. I have no comment. Nothing. Nothing? Nope. I thank Eric. I was on the phone many times with him uh, throughout the last couple of weeks and answered all my questions. So thanks, Eric. Okay. Uh, since there's no other uh, comments or discussion about it, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve an ordinance uh, granting approval of a text amendment to amend text provisions of the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 2 Zoning Districts, to allow school-related transportation centers and storage lots in the R2 District as a conditional use. So, so moved. moved. Second. Uh, any other discussion? None said. Roll call, please. Walrath? No. Dudek? No. Stefani? No. Weinhammer? Yes. Collier? No. McAlpine? My answer is no, but I want to explain it because I, I'm not, anyone that knows me, I don't just say no without explaining what it is. And the first thing that everyone has agreed upon is that I'm a big proponent in working together, collaborating, all our boards saying, how do we, how do we benefit our community? We also have to look at a long-term plan. Um, you know, with, with regards to our taxing bodies, our our residents should demand that from us. They should demand that we work together to come up with a solution. We want to, I know this board wants to come up with a solution with the school district. We know that you legally are obligated to provide transportation. We are not looking to hamper that. We are looking to find a solution. Um, the only reason I'm not able to support this particular tax amendment is simply because it does not, it doesn't fit in this R2 district. Um, I would not support this type of development in another R2 district. Um, that being said, as I said, that's the reason that I voted no for it. So I just wanted to give that context versus just saying no. Uh, thank you, Trustee McAlpine. Um, this matter will be, uh, we will fine tune and have a final vote on this at our May 7th meeting uh, when all the, the, final, <laughs> the additional findings that were discussed tonight and we can make sure that we uh, have a clean ordinance to bring to the village board for a final decision with regarding this, this project. That'll be on the May 7th agenda. Sorry, can you explain that to me? So on May 7th, you said that there's going to be additional information that's coming right. in. I'll let Attorney Euler <laughs> explain. You. So <laughs> with any of our uh, ordinances, particularly zoning related, uh, the there is a requirement that we include the findings of um, the I should say the information that came to you from the public hearing before the plan commission, the recommendations that came to you from the plan commission, any additional information that uh, comes in this evening, any additional information that uh, has been shared with the board since the plan commission meeting, and that the decision of the board is supported by written findings of fact. So uh, the additional time would allow the staff to make sure that the final version of the ordinance includes carefully drafted findings of fact that capture the discussion this evening and the plan commission's discussion. Okay, can you tell me, I understand all that then. Um, I guess, um, I just, you know, I've asked Eric these questions before. Um, I don't know if now is the time or place to ask these questions or. What questions do you have? So I know that we have approved <clears throat> <clears throat> variances with other developers, so many variances, like with garden place apartments and things like that. And, you know, even when I see that this, this particular um, taxing body came in and they changed on April 15th, they said, hey, we're going to go ahead and we're going to provide landscaping. That's something you want us to change. It appears that they're trying to work with what we have requested them to work with. So I guess I'm just a little confused on things that we've done in the past as far as work with different developers that, and then <clears throat> things that are coming in still that wasn't in our packet that we're still seeing tonight. Sure. So uh, there's no doubt that you <clears throat> have worked hard with village staff, you the school um, officials, to draft a plan in the event that a text amendment were approved to draft a plan that would comply with the basic standards under our zoning code and have adjusted your plan over time, the site plan, 
uh, to include the landscaping uh, that may be required here, the fencing requirements that relate to your project. Those issues aren't really in front of you if you initially decide the first question, which is whether or not a text amendment is appropriate in this instance for this particular use at this particular location in this particular zoning district. So with that decision made, the board really isn't getting to those other questions about the site planning. Um, I don't think there's any question the school officials have worked cooperatively with the staff to try to draft a plan that would comply in the event that the text amendment was granted. So I guess my next question is then, <clears throat> on May 7th, we already have all this information, but it's just gonna be put like even more information in front of us to revote on the exact same thing. I'm just not understanding it completely. You, the next vote would only be on the adoption of the actual language of the ordinance, including your factual findings. The decision has been made tonight mm -hmm. to deny the text amendment. Yeah, the three options here, I mean, yeah. correct. Okay. Was kind of very similar to what happened with the, at the ZPA. When they were denied the first one, the, the, the second two didn't come into play because it wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. you know, we appreciate the fact that the school board you know, came, up, came up to the table and was verifying and making sure that they comply. But I just want to touch base a little bit on what you had talked about. You know, I think our board uh, looks at every case uniquely. Every we, we don't blanket everything. We don't put everybody in a, in a lump sum kind of a how we're going to do this. Zoning is very particular, and it, it affects us, and it's a, it's a good tool for us to use. Uh, it, it, it's an opportunity for us to um, look at things in a, a different way, you know, open up different doors and figure out a, a different way for us to approve this. We want to make sure that the schools have an opportunity to provide the busing that they need for school. We're well aware of that. We're up for the challenge to help them find it. We've, we've worked with them in the past. We have to find a place that is, is, is beneficial. But when we look at everything, if we looked at everything all together, we wouldn't be doing each individual project justice. Like when you, you mentioned Garden Place Apartment, that was a whole separate thing. And we did the same thing with Cary Senior Living and some of the other uh, residential areas, like the Cary Senior, where the senior center is. We have to look at everything individually and give it its own merit, where it is and how it impacts the community, what is exactly around it. <coughs> so you know, I just want you to remind us that we've, we've made these decisions on, on the best interest of the village. And then was the comprehensive plan created during the time that the school board was had this property for sale? Yes. So then the comprehensive plan since they're no longer having it for sale, the comprehensive plan for that part of the school district probably isn't. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand the school district was very involved in the comprehensive plan, as were all the other taxing districts. But do you districts. feel that, that it's outdated? Well, it's, it's that been- That part it's of it is outdated? Well, not that part of it. I mean, it evolves. But it we've is learned, if we've it's learned no anything, longer for sale. Well, if we've learned anything, we have to pivot. We have to look at things in a, a, broader, spo a broader perspective. And regardless if the, the property's for sale or not, it, the, the board just decided a, a, a use of that does not belong in an R2 zoning district. So I know, but when people keep referring back to the comprehensive plan, I would say at this point for this location, it's out of date. Okay. Well, that, that's a good point, and that's something that we, we can have a discussion at at a committee. Do, do we want to refresh the, the current comprehensive plan? You know, they typically last 10, 15 years. We're, we're coming up on that, 20 years even. You know, it, it, our, the last one we had before was that was like, correct me, it was like 20 years old at least. So, I mean, it's, it's a big undertaking. It's a huge community involvement. It costs a lot of money to get it done. So we want to make sure that we are providing all the, the right information and looking at things uh, holistically. And we had unbelievable community. I was at every one of those meetings. We had unbelievable community support. It was crazy, the amount of support that we had and the input. And that <coughs> document that we have is... The, the culmination of everybody's input on that. So if I'd be more than willing to talk about next phases with the, with the conference of hand, but thank you for your comments, I appreciate that. Mayor, can I just ask um, Attorney yep. Euler a question? Yep. So one of the things I see in here, and maybe it needs a little bit of commentary by you. Your mic, please. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Usually I'm told I'm too loud, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I was just wondering if we could get some commentary, Attorney Euler, 
about the, the um, several sentences in here talk about if this was approved, that it would impact other R2 uh, zoned areas and that potentially they could too come through and go through the same process. So our, if we were to approve this, would this be somewhat precedent sending for us as it relates to an R2 district? Uh, without a doubt. This, the way it is currently drafted without any additional parameters um, around the establishment of this kind of a use of transportation facility, <coughs> this would apply to any property zoned R2 in the, in the village of Cary. So just as it relates to the four schools, maybe six if you want to take the other ones that are listed in here, am I to understand then all four or all six of these schools could likewise build a building on their property for maintenance and bus washing if this was approved? If they so choose to, to approach us for, uh, for approval? Well, I'm going to have to defer since I don't know the zoning of those. No. <laughs> Those properties, I have to defer uh, to Director Simmons. They're, yeah. all, so they're all listed as R2. Correct. So the current uh, zoning ordinance, uh, most of the Briargate School, uh, the Maplewood property, uh, the old junior high property, and the high school property are all zoned R2 uh, as of today. Uh, so the way we've looked at the, the transportation centers from a standpoint is those properties currently have uh, schools that are established on them. Uh, on their sites, so a, a transportation center could be established on that property as an accessory use. Uh, what the proposed text amendment would be is allowing a transportation center to be the primary use of the property. Uh, so, in a property that does not have a school um, on it or currently used for a school, uh, would allow uh, a <coughs> transportation use to be established on that lot. So, okay. any property that's zoned R2, um, I go back to the slide. <coughs> Uh, and this slide, uh, any property that is uh, basically in yellow is zoned R2 within the village. Uh, so as it's currently drafted, the tax amendment would allow um, uh, the proposed use to be allowed, permitted as a conditional use within that district. Um, if there were other changes that the board wanted to make to a text amendment um, to change the code to make it, an example, a minimum size for the lot to go on to. So if it's a three-acre property, would only be eligible for a school or a transportation center type center use, that would eliminate uh, existing properties that don't comply with that requirement. Okay. I was mostly looking for, I think, the answer that you already provided, which is it does set a precedent. If you do it for one, you open the doors for many others. Okay. I, Thank I you. have a question for you, Brian. So, you're, so <laughs> if the Maplewood School was torn down and they rebuilt an administrative building by permitted use, would they be allowed? To build the bus depot, an administrative building would be a permitted use on that property, uh, and then yes. a bus depot can be built along with it. Yes or no? Yes, I would believe that would be a permitted use in that, from a standpoint of it's an accessory use with the uh, permitted use from that district. Okay, any other questions? Uh, moving on, administrator's report. Uh, I'm going to defer to staff. There's a lot of updates we have in the department head reports. Okay. Chief Finlan? Uh, just a reminder that we have a combined uh, blood drive, community blood drive, with the uh, fire department. It will be conducted April 20th, which is Saturday, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the uh, fire, uh, Cary Fire Protection District Station 1, which is located at 400 Cary Algonquin Road. Thank you, Chief. Director Noonan? Yes, as Administrator Marmoto Mar mentioned, there's a lot of uh, announcements, so bear with me. Uh, we have spring cleanup. Those uh, continue this weekend on Saturday, April 20th, uh, continues on the north side of the railroad tracks. Uh, happy and excited to announce the <coughs> grand opening of the pavilion at Rotary Park. That will take place on s Friday, April 26th at 2 p.m., so if anybody is interested in attending that, we would be happy to have you out there. Um, Hydrant flushing also is going to begin the week of April 29th. We have our very first community cleanup days that we talked about at the last uh, committee, the whole meeting. Um, that will take place on May 4th at 8.30. We're gonna meet on Spring Street at Alfresco Alley um, to get our supplies and 
locations. Uh, we've asked anybody who's interested in attending that that they contact Public Works by April 25th so that we know the amount of people that are going to be there and uh, the supplies to uh, have on hand. Also, the curbside brush pickup is going to take place on May 6th, uh, starting on the south side of the railroad tracks, and the following week, May 13th, will continue on the north side of those railroad tracks. And finally, uh, we were informed by the Union Pacific <coughs> Railroad that there's going to be a railroad closure at West Main Street in US 14. Um, this is for maintenance and repairs of the railroad tracks. Uh, that's going to start on April 29th and continue uh, around uh, May 17th. Uh, there will be detoured signage going down Cary Algonquin uh, 14 and Jandis cutoff. So Jandis will still remain open. Um, high to carry will remain open. Um, so there will be access in and out of downtown. Took them long enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Director Noonan, what m modes of, inform how are we going to get this out to the public besides uh, detour signs and that? The de uh, <coughs> yes, besides <coughs> the detour signs, we've got uh, printed documents that we'll be delivering to all the businesses downtown. It's posted on our website, the uh, Cary News Weekly, and there's a press release going um, out as well. Um, I'm sure we can share it on social medias, and uh, if there's any other Textcaster. Textcaster. Yeah, we'll do text casting as well. Some text messaging. Okay. Thank you, Director Simmons. Anything? Uh, no update this evening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any future agenda items and discussion by the village board? I'm going to throw it out again. We're going to uh, have a, a public comment policy discussion at the next committee of the whole, deciding how we want to handle these things moving moving forward. So, uh, staff will be gathering uh, information with uh, what some of the neighboring communities are doing and you know, what's worked for us for, uh, for all these years. So I look forward to that discussion. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned at 647. Mm -hmm.